many people have heard of the distinction between two terms, organizing versus mobilizing? Give a thumbs up if you have, thumbs sideways if you're not sure, thumbs down if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Everyone hates me and there's so many thumbs down. No, okay. So there's like some medium sides. So one of the biggest things, uh, now as a senior strategist and a senior advisor to like a bunch of different epic grassroots movements from moveon.org to um, Mobilization Lab to like all these other cool things, what I've realized is even professional advocates don't actually know this differentiation. And it's a really important starting point for citizens and advocates together to have as we try to understand how to dismantle the master's house with its own tools, um, or how to like not even believe in the house, whatever you want to decide you're going to do. So we're going to talk about a little bit of both, and I'm going to see if there's like a little laser pointer thing that helps me do this. Eh, maybe not. Okay. So, um, oh, yes. All right. <laughs> Mobilizing. How many people are on like, have been on like OFA listservs, email lists, or moveon.org listservs, or on like any type of like, uh, congressional candidate or gubernatorial candidate, and you can type in the box. Okay, cool, great. Like most people in the room here, and if you haven't, I'm really impressed with you. Good job, keep it up. Um, so a lot of the type of organizing theory of change and the tactics, um, actually, how many, yeah, or like the Democratic or Republican Party too. Um, a lot of the theory of change and organizing tactics that they use as these, as these big national organizations are called mobilizing strategies. And what that basically means or assumes, and this isn't bad, I actually want to start off by like, there is no value judgment on both sides. We're just going to differentiate them. What that means is that the assumption of these organizations is that knowledge is at the top. That the power and the decision of what we should do in a given moment, like when there's a Muslim ban, what they say is like, sign this petition or call your member of Congress or do this thing. It's a mobilizing strategy. And all of us doing this one thing all together at once will create a ripple. And like it does, right? Like sometimes it totally absolutely works. Having everyone do one thing all at once in a very sort of like linear way. How many people have felt are on the DCCC or the RNCC listserv or you know, congressional listservs and have felt really annoyed by the like sign this petition for the 45th time email? OK, yes, I'm raising my hand too as a political professional who approved a lot of those emails. Um, yeah, it's actually really overused. And the thing I want to actually point to our friend who was, who's from, whose parents were from the Ukraine. The thing that's really fascinating about this type of organizing strategy is that it's really actually helpful Like when you want to get everyone to do a thing all at the same time. But it's really unhelpful, and it can actually prohibit an actual revolution. Because what happens is everyone's so busy doing the thing and hand to phone and calling the member of Congress that they're not actually getting creative and using their own smarts and guts and minds and brains to figure out how to solve the problem that's right in front of their faces. So a part of my theory on the case for today's presentation is that progressive and conservative organizations alike, and I'm going to talk about conservative organizations in a hot minute, have been overusing mobilizing tactics, strategies, and organizational models in the past five years to the extent that we've actually inhibited people from actually grassroots organizing. 